All right, in this video, I want to talk about finding the domain and range of a function if you're given a graph. And the basic idea to me is to find the domain from a graph, I'm going to think about all the points on the graph. And if I were to, you know, I basically want to try to list out all the x values that get used. All the x values that get used, those are what we call, uh, refer to as the domain of the function. To get the range, we simply list uh, all the y values that ever get used on our graph. Um, so finding domain and range from a graph to me isn't terrible. Um, it's when you don't have a formula is when I think, or when you only have a formula, that's when it's a little harder. So I've already written out the answer, so I've got them covered up here for a second. But to state to find the domain um, again, I'm I, so here's my graph. It's the square root of x minus four. So again, I'm thinking the first x coordinate that ever gets used on my graph is the number four. Kind of another way I think about it is, so domain has to do with x values. I kind of just move my pen or pencil, um, you know, I hold it up and down and just move it left to right. And I think, when do I start hitting the graph? Well, the first place I'm going to hit the graph is at positive 4, including that. And then I'm going to keep touching it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, which means the domain will start at positive 4 and continue forever. So in interval notation, we simply write that as 4 to infinity, inclusive, so we use brackets. To do the range, I do the same thing, just with the y values. So if I were to move my pen, I'm still up and down this time. I'm not touching, not touching, not touching. The smallest y value that I ever hit would be at 0. And then I'm always touching, always touching, always touching, always touching. So again, you have to think about, too, what's going on. As x gets arbitrarily large, y will get big, too. So this graph actually keeps increasing forever and ever and ever as you move uh, um, up and to the right. So the smallest value is 0, and then it goes on forever and ever. So we would say the range is simply 0 to infinity. Um, <clears throat> OK, so let's, uh, let's do the same thing here on a couple more. So this time we've kind of got a half a parabola. Um, but again, to, so to find the domain, I just move my pen left to right, not touching, not touching, not touching, not touching. At the y-axis, or correspondingly, x equals 0, I'm still not touching. There's no point there. That's what the open circle indicates. But as soon as you move past it, you are touching, are touching. Yes, you are. You're touching forever and ever and ever. So the domain would start at 0, but not include 0, and go to infinity. The same thing with the range, I think. When do I touch the graph? Well, even at negative 5, I'm not touching the graph. But it's as soon as you go above negative 5, you are touching forever and ever and ever. So that means all of those y values get used. So our range would be at negative 5, but just missing it. Um, we have to skip over it and not include it, but then go to positive infinity. OK, so one more here. Um, Notice here our graph's kind of broken up. So we would say this is an example of a function that's not continuous, but that's OK. It doesn't have to be continuous. We can still talk about the domain and range. OK, so again, the arrow to the left just means it keeps going forever and ever and ever. So no matter where I put my pen way out on the left, you know, I would always be touching the graph. So as I move left to right, in my head, I'm touching, I'm still touching, I'm still touching, I'm still touching. Again, you know, we can't write it infinitely long. You have to imagine a little bit. But I would be touching it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever up until the x-coordinate of negative 6, but not including it. So we start way at the left at negative infinity up to negative 6, not including it. So I'm going to make a little set of parentheses. And then I'm not touching the graph anywhere in between. There's no graph, no graph, no graph, no graph, no graph. The next x-coordinate where I touch the graph would be the x-coordinate of 8, including 8. So I'm going to put little brackets because we include 8. And then as I move to the right, I'm touching it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Again, assuming it keeps moving to the right and down. So our domain would be uh, negative infinity to negative 6, not including negative 6. Or also, we could uh, include um, 8 to infinity. Okay, So both of these, any, any x-coordinate in these intervals will, will be an x-coordinate on our graph. 
Last but not least, the range. Again, this arrow to me indicates it goes down forever and ever and ever. So no matter where you start down here at negative infinity, you'd be touching the graph. We'd be touching the graph somewhere. Okay. So we'll start our range at negative infinity. And then I'm still touching, 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 touching up until this value of negative 5, and including negative 5, again, because it's shaded in. And then there's a little gap where, you know, I'm not touching the graph at all in between there. So I have to skip over those y values. Once I hit the x-axis, again, I'm not quite touching the graph because there's an open circle. So that's at 0, we'll put parentheses. But then, as I keep moving up, I'll always be touching the graph over here on the left side. So the y values will extend off to positive infinity, and now we have our domain and our range.